Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to flash ExpressLRS version 3 on these new Radio Master ER5 receivers. If you're using PWM with ExpressLRS, and you probably are if you bought these receivers, that means you probably want to install revision 3.0 of ExpressLRS because that's the one where we get the full 16 channels of fully proportional output for PWM. So if you already have that on your transmitter, you're going to need to update your receivers so they're compatible. Before we get into the flashing, just want to cover the receivers really quick. They have two versions. This is the ER5C and this one's the ER5A. They call the ER5C a surface vehicle receiver because the pins stand straight up. So if you want to put it in a car or a truck or something like that. And for the ER5A, they consider that an airborne receiver because the pins go out the back. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Both receivers will work in both types of models. It really just doesn't matter. It's a matter of personal choice. So if you want your pins to come straight up, get the ER5C. And if you want the pins to come out the back, get the ER5A. They use the same firmware, same hardware. It's just a different pin arrangement. Second thing I want to touch on is that when these first came out, I saw some comments in one of the videos that I did talking about these receivers that why it's a five channel receiver, because there are plenty of planes that can deal with a five channel receiver just fine. Not everything has to be eight channels. I've got all kinds of airplanes, wings, for example, only use three channels. I've got plenty of basic airplanes that use just four channels, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. In a lot of cases, these will work just great. And at the price point of under 20 bucks, how can you go wrong? All right, let's get into flashing. You can flash via Wi-Fi if you want. And if you want to do that, all you got to do is plug it in, wait for the light to start blinking quickly, connect to 10.0.0.1 in your browser, and upload your firmware. That works fine. But if you want to flash via dongle, that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, the reason I'm going to show you this method is because if you flash via Wi-Fi and something goes wrong, you'll need to use this to recover. So if you have any issues during the flash process, you'll need to get a dongle so you can recover the receiver. I'm also going to disassemble the ER5A so you can see the pin connections very closely. To decase the ER5A, you flip it over and remove this little Phillips screw that's on the bottom. There's only one screw, so just take that one out. And then on the side, there are a couple of little clips. You just give a little inward pressure where those clips go, and the case should just pop right off. Now, channel one is at the top, and battery is down at the bottom. So we'll keep that in mind when we're making our connections. Next, I'm going to unplug the dongle because I don't like dealing with hot wires while I'm plugging things in. Now we'll plug the red wire in the middle row. It doesn't matter which one. It just pick one. It doesn't matter. And same for ground. You're going to put that on the bottom row, bottom row of pins. And again, doesn't matter what ground. It's a common bus. So it doesn't matter which one. Just pick two. Red goes in the middle. Ground goes on the bottom. And after that, you'll connect your RX lead from the dongle to pin number two. Skip pin number one. You're going to connect it to pin number two, and you're going to put that on the signal row, which is the top row of pins. See that right there on the top. And then your TX lead from the dongle goes on pin number three. Okay, once you've got your pins arranged, the way I like to do this is I'm going to disconnect the red lead from the receiver. That way we don't get any power. I'll plug my dongle into the computer. And then we'll go back to the receiver and you have to press this boot button right here. You got to press that little boot button. And when you press that, then you can connect your power back to the receiver. Again, it doesn't matter. Just put it on the middle rail. And when you plug that in, you'll get a solid green light just like that. That's in boot mode. Now you can flip over to Express LRS Configurator to compile and flash the receiver. I'll have a link in the description for downloading the Express LRS configurator. So go grab that and install it. And once you do, we're going to look for release version 3.0. And for target, we're going to use DIY 2.4 gigahertz. And the device type in this case is the DIY 2400RX PWMP. For flashing method, use UART. And then set your other options as appropriate down below. If you're in the US, you'll use ISM 2400. If you're in the EU, you'll use EUCE 2400. For the auto Wi-Fi on interval, I like to set mine for 20 seconds. And all that means is after 20 seconds of power, if the receiver isn't bound to the transmitter, it'll simply connect to your Wi-Fi network or it'll turn on its own hotspot. If you add your home Wi-Fi SSID with an SSID and password, after that 20 second interval, it will connect to your home Wi-Fi and you can go directly to the receiver via IP address. Finally, on the bottom, you'll select the COM port. In my case, I've already got my dongle plugged in and working, and I see the Silicon Labs driver, so I'll select that, and then I'll hit Build and Flash. I've already compiled this firmware, so my build will go relatively quickly. Yours might take longer than that. Don't worry about it. 
This only went quick for me because I've already built it. You can see we've got writing going across the screen there, and then we've got writing success. So once you see that, you're pretty much done with configurator. The next thing we'll do is unplug the receiver from the dongle, and we want it to reset. We want to get out of boot mode, and then we're going to have it connect to our Wi-Fi network. So I'll simply disconnect power and then plug it back in. That's all we have to do. And now we can get configurator out of the way. And I'm going to look on my router for an IP address. And when this light goes blinking quickly, we should see the DHCP server issue an IP address to the receiver. So there's the quick blink. Now we'll look on this screen and I should see an IP address pop up. There it is. It is .189 on my network. So I will simply open that on my browser. I'll just put that address in the top of my URL bar and that'll bring me into the receiver. You can set your binding phrase in your firmware configuration just like I showed you, but you can also enter it here. So if you wanna change it, you can do that, and then you'd hit save and reboot. On the Wi-Fi page, you can also change your SSID and password. So imagine being at like a race event or a flying event where they've got Wi-Fi, you'd be able to go ahead and enter in a different Wi-Fi SSID and password, and then anytime you need to, the receiver can connect to the SSID at your event. On the model page, we have the ability to make some changes that are very important on the receiver. So I'm going to start out with channel 5 or AUX1. In Express LRS, channel 5 or AUX1 is used for arming, but we only have five channels on a receiver and we don't necessarily want to burn an output pin for arming, which is information only needed by the receiver. So the developers have set up a way to do what's called a remap. And what we can do on the remap is click this little down arrow and on the pin number five on this receiver, I don't want to output channel five. I want to output channel six. So you simply click on channel six and from that point on, anything in your mixer that's assigned to channel six will show up on pin number five's output. So just a little remap capability to make sure that we're not wasting a pin for the arming feature required internally on the receiver. The other option you have on this page is setting your failsafe. In my case, my throttle is always on channel three. So my failsafe value of 988 basically means no pulses. So throttle is cut and all of the other channels are set at their midpoint. So if you have some other thing that you'd like to do, like negative values, you can go ahead and set those in here. You can set 988 for the bottom or 2000 for the top. The other thing you can do is invert your travel if you want to, and you can also change your output mode. So if your servos are digital and you want to run them at 333 hertz, you can do that by setting those values in here as well. So very important capabilities on the receiver for setting parameters on the output for PWM. And once you're happy with everything, go ahead and hit set PWM output and your outputs will be updated. And then the last thing you can get to is the update page. So if you want to update again via Wi-Fi, you can do that here. Just choose a file and hit update. That wraps up my video on how to flash the ER5A and ER5C receivers by Radio Master. I hope you liked the content. And if you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.